is this ministry about self-exalting oneself? Is this ministry about self-exalting oneself? Now we know what Yahweh Shai said. He said, he that exalteth himself shall be abased. Now you see certain individuals come into this ministry or been called into this ministry and they think it's an avenue to put themselves on a pedestal. When the real individual we should be putting on a pedestal and worshiping is Yahweh Shai because he's our savior. He's the one that's coming to save the elect, right? So it's not, this ministry is not about us elevating ourselves. You know, exalting ourselves. Okay, we will be exalted, but that's going to be in the kingdom. And even slightly before the kingdom, we will be used by the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son to exalt the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. As it is written, the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. All right, but is this ministry a platform for us to exalt ourselves? The answer is no. And there's three scriptures that I can show you that, to prove this. Because as you see, you have certain individuals elevating themselves. As the scripture have said in the latter days, men shall be lovers of themselves. And you see that even in this truth, even in this ministry. Let me get that for you. Lovers of themselves. And by the way, let me start by saying all praises and glory is due to Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai Bar Shem Rakakwadash. Shalom to the Lord's elect. Hopefully you find this video edifying and exhorting. Lovers of themselves. Let's read that scripture. <clears throat> okay, let's try. Shall be lovers. Shall be lovers. It is right here. These are the words that the Apostle Paul said to Timothy in his letter to Timothy. Now, look at the subheading. Difficult times will come. This is 2 Timothy 3 and 1. This know also that in the last days, we what time period are we in, people? We're in the last days, right? The last days of Esau's society, Esau's kingdom. So he says, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. And we're in that time now. And as we get closer and closer to the end, it's going to get more dangerous and more dangerous, the times that we're in. That's what the word perilous means. It, mean, it literally means danger, peril. Now, when you read that in the NLT, it says, you should know this, Timothy, that in the last days, there will be very difficult times. Let's keep on reading. It says, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Right. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. In other words, conceited, vain, okay, foolishly proud. And we see evidence of that even in this knowledge, this truth, the behavior of certain men. Okay, they have elevated themselves. You know, they can't wait to be elevated by Yahweh Shai. You know, number one, when Yahweh Shai delivers us, changes our bodies, and then put a crown on our heads, that's really when we're going to be elevated. They can't wait for that. And they elevate themselves based on the simplicity, the, sim the, sim the simple minds of their congregation. As it is written, the simple believeth every word. Okay, most of these guys that elevate themselves, when you really scrutinize them, you see that the Holy Spirit is really not working with them. Because if the Holy Spirit was really working with you, you wouldn't elevate yourself. You, you do, you do the, um, the, the, quite the opposite. You wouldn't seek to be elevated. You would, you would have a very low profile. You would, hum, you would, be, you would a, be a person that's of great humility. As it is written, the greater thou art, the more humble thyself. Is that not written? There you go. So... Here's a clue for you, how you can spot a, a false teacher, a false prophet. One of his, his, uh, um, one of his faults is that he seeks to elevate himself. 
He uses the ministry as a platform to elevate himself. It's all about him. Okay, that individual, the spirit of Yahweh Shai is definitely not working with that individual because Yahweh Shai himself didn't have that spirit. Okay? Yahweh Shai wasn't trying to elevate himself. As a matter of fact, we're going to hold the scripture and let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Now, after Yahweh Shai did what he was supposed to do, the job he was given by his father, Yahweh, then he was elevated. When he went back to the heavens, we, we can read about it in Revelation, the fifth chapter, how the uh, angels bowed before him to the joy of the heavenly father, Yahweh, because he completed the task he completed the mission that he was supposed to do on the planet Earth. So naturally, he received his reward, which consisted of him being elevated. We haven't finished the mission that we were given to do. Okay? So we're not in the time of elevating ourselves and putting ourselves on the pedestal. So that right there lets me know these guys do not understand the scriptures. These guys that are seeking to elevate themselves. Here it is right here. This is the book of John, the sixth chapter. John six. And uh, this is right after Yahweh Shai had did this great miracle, which every time you notice, every time Yahweh Shai did a miracle, he'd always give the credit to his father, Yahweh. Always. He'd say, look, the, the power that you see me have, it was given to me by my father. So he would use that as an opportunity to elevate who? The Father, which is Yahweh. He wouldn't use it as an, uh, as an opportunity to elevate himself. John 6 and 14. Then those men, which they, when they had seen the miracle that Yahweh Shai did, see that? And for you to find out what miracle he did, just go up to the first verse, around the first verse gets into it. Uh, that Yahweh Shai did said, "This is a this is of a truth that prophet that should come into the world." Right. Um, read on. Yahweh Shai walks on water. When when Yahweh Shai therefore perceived because of the miracle that he did, when he perceived when Yahweh Shai therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king. Right? Because of the miracle he had just did. The people wanted to physically come and take him and f make him a king. You know? Probably march down to the authorities and say, look, this man should be our king. And, you know, had to be a huge multitude of people, man. They wanted to take him by force to make him a king. Right? <laughs> he departed again into a mountain himself alone. And he stayed up in that mountain till the evenings, or till the evening. That's what I meant to say, till the evening. Let's read that in NLT. So what does that show us? That shows us that Yahweh Shai understood it was not his time to be elevated like that. Indeed, he is king of kings and lord of lords. There's no question there. But why did he, when, they, when the people, after he did that miracle, the people were so pleased with that miracle and so fascinated by it, they said, man, we got to make this man a king right now. So why didn't Yahweh Shai, knowing that he's king of kings and lord of lords, why didn't he allow them to make himself a king? Well, there you go. It wasn't time for that. 15 verse, when, uh, NLT, when Yahweh Shai saw that they were ready to force him to be their king, he slipped away into the hills by himself. See that? And he stayed there till the evening. So that's my point. Yahweh Shai wasn't using the ministry to elevate himself because that's a, that's a perfect opportunity where he could have used the ministry and the power he was given to elevate himself. He did not do that. He showed discipline. 
That's another thing with those guys that been called into the ministry and use it to elevate themselves. They have no discipline. There's a time that we will be elevated beyond our wildest dreams, but that's going to be in the kingdom. Okay? Now, let me get the next scripture for you. The greater thou art, which I quoted it, but I'll actually get it for those of you that are new. The greater thou art. It is right here. This is from the Apocrypha, or as King Marshall would say, the Apocryphy. Uh, Ecclesiasticus 3 and 18. By the way, King Marshall, as far as I know, and I spent what? I spent uh, I spent six years underneath the man. Well, no. Well, wait a minute. What am I saying there? I spent. I'm thinking about the school. We left the school in what? Ninety five was it? Either ninety five or ninety six, and then we went to the house of David. We were still underneath King Marshall. Pretty much I was underneath King Marshall till he passed away, but I'm I'm really thinking of the school, 1 West 125th Street. All right. And the point I'm making is I want I never once heard him say, I'm King David. Even though we all took an oath, uh, in you no know, saying that this man is King David. Which I, I, I didn't have a problem with that. And I still don't have a problem with it. I believe in my heart of hearts that that man is King David. King Marshall. And I believe we will see him again when he's risen. He wasn't no ordinary man. But the point I'm making is he never once stood up and said, Just so you know, I am King David. <laughs> he's a very humble man. Anyone who knows King Marshall knows or high, elder high priest uh, Marsha, Mo as he was affectionately called, Mo, everyone knows that he, everyone that knows him that is, knows that he was a very humble man, very humble man, okay? So Ecclesiasticus 3 and 18, here's another scripture for you, the greater thou art, so it, let's say it is, it's apparent you are great in the ministry, a good speaker, a good teacher, whatever, well, the greater thou art, the more humble thyself. You don't elevate yourself based upon those, you know, that platform. You can be a good speaker, good teacher, whatever. You don't elevate yourself. That's the quickest way to the path of destruction. Because <laughs> the Heavenly Father, as it is resist as as it is written, as not as it is resisted, as it is written, he resisteth the proud. Right? And he well, let's get it. James. See, a lot of these guys, they don't understand, especially these guys that are in these other groups that are seeking to elevate themselves like they can save somebody. They can't even save themselves. <laughs> but you listen to them, you think they could save you. Uh, James, the fourth chapter, and beginning at the sixth verse, it says this, um, but he as in the heavenly father, Yahweh, through his son, Yahweh Shai, but he giveth more grace, but he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, right, the heavenly father resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. See that? So if you foolishly proud in this thing of ours, you, the spirit of the heavenly father, Yahweh, Bar Shem Yahweh Shai, is resisting you. And it's only a matter of time till, till you, you know, he destroys you. Okay? So it's not a good idea to elevate ourselves in this ministry. Now, let's get the one in, back in Ecclesiastes 3 and 18. The greater thou art, the more humble thyself. And thou shalt find favor before the Lord. So it's always a good practice for us. You notice I'm saying us because I'm, I'm teaching it. I'm learning it as well. That's the thing. When I teach you brothers and you sisters, I'm learning too as I'm teaching you. We never stop learning, man. 
Okay, so this teaches me. The greater thou art, the more humble thyself, and thou shalt find favor before the Lord. We're trying, we're living in a time where we're trying to, any way we can, we're trying to find favor from you. How about Shemel Shah? Absolutely, man. <laughs> That's the smartest thing we can do. We try to get on Yahweh Shemiel Shai's good side. Scripture says, kiss the sun, at least he be angry. We know what time we're living in. We know how angry the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son is right about now. So we're trying to find favor, man. So the last thing we want to do is, is piss the Most High and His Son off by elevating ourselves as if we're greater than what we really are. You, you remember what uh, uh, the Apostle Paul said? Um, let's get that. Uh, it is right here. Because what if you, you, you know, you got your congregation elevating you like you some great man, right? As if you can walk on water. <laughs> what if you... You have your congregation, a bunch of simple-minded individuals elevating you, putting you on a pedestal. What if it turns out you're really not that great man? Now what? You're going to end up looking incredibly stupid, man. So it's always a good rule of thumb to just humble ourselves, not to think too highly of ourselves, not to think too much of ourselves, and just be glad that Yahweh Shemiah Shai has showed us some kind of mercy. And just keep a low profile, man. It's always a good rule of thumb to be that way. Uh, Galatians, the sixth chapter, the third verse. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. You see that? Let's read that in the NLT. I, mean, I don't have to explain that. Galatians 6 and 3 from the NLT. If you think you are too important to help someone, you are only fooling yourself. You are not that important. <laughs> you are not that important. That's just, even if it turns out we really are important, mega important, we're supposed to have the mentality of thinking we're not that important. That's how this thing works. Let me say that one more time. Even if we think we are mega important, uber important, we're supposed to have the mentality of we're not that important. See, that keeps us in a, with a low profile. That keeps us with a humble mindset. That's what Yahweh Bar Shemel Shai likes. Um, let's get the next scripture. Now, I didn't write these down, so bear with me if it's not flowing smooth. <laughs> as long as you're being edified, that's what, it's, that's what counts. This is Romans 12 and 3. That's the next scripture. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. And you've seen it with certain guys, man, they riding on horses and shit, running into pavilions and, and with flanked by their bodyguards and acting as if they're going to be the savior of the nation of Israel. <laughs> and they got... Simple-minded women praising them, fan dancing and all that bullshit. That is not the way a true man of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yashah, behaves. Absolutely not. That's a major red flag. Again, what did Yahweh Shai said? He that exalteth himself shall be what? Let's read it. Let me read it for you. It is right here. It's in Matthew. It's in Luke. Matthew and Luke. Let's read both of them. Matthew 23, 12. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be a base, meaning brought low, brought to nothing. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. See? So the greater thou art, the more humble thyself. We're supposed to have the mentality of, look, I'm not that important. Even if you may, you very well may be very important. It's just the right kind of mentality to have. Luke 14 11. For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. There you go. Um, 
So back to Romans 12 and 3, for I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. And I just gave you an example of thinking soberly. Even though you may be very, very important in the ministry, just always have the mentality. We just always have the mentality we're not that important. So what that does is it grounds us. It keeps, it keeps our head from getting too swelled up. That's what it does. But to think soberly according as the most I have dealt to every man the measure of faith. Let's read that in the NLT. Because of the privilege and authority the Heavenly Father have, has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. So if that wasn't, if the KJV wasn't explicit enough for you, especially those of you that are new, this should explain to you exactly what this verse is talking about. Let's read it one more time. Because of the privilege and authority the Heavenly Father has given me, I give each of you this warning. So this is a warning from the Apostle Paul. Don't think you are better. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves. Absolutely, man. Some, uh, you know, what makes it even worse? You have guys who put on this cult of personality, fake ass cult of personality, knowing deep down inside they're really not that guy. They're really not like that. But they put on this fake cult of personality, and you have these simpletons who are not able to discern spirits. Because part of the gifts we receive in this ministry is the ability to, to discern spirits. So you have these simple-minded individuals that's not that don't have that ability. So they get wrapped up. They get caught up in their cult of personality. They get wrapped up in the cult of personality of their leader that he created. And he's nothing like that. Just like a Hollywood actor. You'd be amazed. You see these Hollywood actors. First of all, what you don't see is the many takes it takes for them to get it right. You just see the finished product. So you watch these Hollywood actors and you really think they're like that. And they're nothing like the characters that they play. Absolutely nothing. They're, they're, in most cases, a lot of them are path pathetic, man. Because they're doing that to gain some kind of um, validation from people to validate themselves. You know? <laughs> Remember, the word actor is from the Greek meaning hypocrite. And like I told you, a lot of these Hollywood actors, some of, they're some of the weirdest people on the planet, man. But then when you watch them in the movies, they, they, they come off as superstars. Everybody wants to be like them. But then when you see their real life, the, re, the way they really are, you say, my goodness, what made me fall for this person? Now, indeed, you have some Hollywood actors who, who what you see on the screen is really what how they are, except for the, the, the you know, the the super amazing stuff they do, which is all special effects. But I'm talking about their character, you know? Like Steve McQueen, he was really a tough guy. He was, on, on screen, he was a tough guy. In real life, he was a tough guy. Charles Bronson, you know, on screen, he was a tough guy. In real life, he was a tough guy. Read about Charles Bronson. He's a very tough guy. So you always have exception to the rule, but most of your actors... And actresses, they're nothing like what they portray on screen. So, again, going back, we don't want to be like a goddamn actor. We want to keep it real, man. In this ministry, we want to keep it real, especially being true to ourselves. Be true to ourselves. Okay? All of us have strengths. All of us have weaknesses. Know our strengths. And mo mo what's even more important, know our weaknesses. Know our strengths and know our weaknesses. That's even more important, to know your weakness and, and to, to avoid it. You know, I'm not going to mess with that. I know my weakness. I'm not messing with that. You know? Some people, their weakness is uh, attention. They're attention whores. That's their weakness. So if that's your weakness, seek to not be in a position where you have to be an attention whore. Look at what Yahweh Shai did. When they came to make him a king, he dipped into the hills, man. He said, man, it ain't time for that. Now, if Yahweh Shai was an attention whore, 
sucking up all the attention. Yes, I should be made a king. After all, my father, Howard told me I'm king of kings and lord of lords. Yeah, come on. Yeah, make me a king. God damn it. I'm ready to be a king. <laughs> Just think about that, man. So there's a lot we can learn from that story. Okay? Romans 15 and 4. Whatsoever things are written aforetime are written for our learning. Because of the privilege and authority the Heavenly Father has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest. That's the part I like. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves. Measuring yourselves by the faith the Most High has given us or given you. You know, some brothers have more faith than others. It's not for us to boast against that brother. It's for us to help that brother, help him get his level of faith up. That's the smartest thing we can do. Don't behave proudly against the brother because you have more faith than him. Damn, brother, you weak, brother. Nah, 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 man. Help that brother. Help that brother. Hey, brother, maybe you could try this. Maybe you could fast more. Hey, hey brother, you should try fasting. That'll improve your faith. You know, you, you, you help the brother. You be a brother to the brother, man. Hey, it is what it is. You know, you got these guys who, who, who act like their shit don't stink. These holier than thou guys. Yeah, how about Shimei Shai don't like a holier than thou guy, man? I'm telling you. That's the quickest way to piss Yeah, how about Shimei Shai off? To act more than what you really are. But I believe I've made the point. There was another scripture I was thinking about, but then it came and left. Maybe the Holy Spirit will come on one of you brothers. You can put it in the comment section. As always, when I do these videos, you know, I want you to take part in these videos and put, put, don't be shy, man. Put your precepts, man. Add to the lesson. That's what YouTube is all about. It's not about me. I'm not trying out here trying to create some fucking cult of personality, man. Okay? Because I already see the dangers of it. You know, the scriptures speak about a sincere and honest heart. Teaching the Lord's people, feeding the lambs and feeding the sheep. Yeah, you feed the lambs and you feed the sheep with a sincere and honest heart. I make I make mistakes. It's, there's times I go off on the scripture, man. And I feel like shit. And I'm corrected, either by Elder Apostle Tal or Elder Apostle Aramlav, or even, uh, um, he's, I don't think he's ever did that, but even uh, if... Um, Elder Apostle Ricard came to me and said, hey, brother, you kind of went off on that. I said, hey, brother, you're right. I did. Okay? The scriptures say a, a, a righteous man falleth seven times, but, the, but he gets right back up. That's another thing. These guys think they can never go off, you know? That's not a good spirit to have, man. Well, as long as we're in this flesh, brothers, we're going to be imperfect. As long as we're in this flesh. We're going to be perfect when Yahweh Shai changes us. That's when we're going to be perfect. When he changes our bodies and he put that crown on our head, you're going to be perfect. But till then, there you go. All right, so I've said enough. Hopefully you were edified. Plus, I got to get ready for camp anyway. So see you in the next one.